Hi, this is Jimmy from the Productive Engineer, and today I'm going to be covering how to use the Evernote Web Clipper to capture content you want to grab from the web and put it into Evernote. I'm going to cover all the options, um, all the available ways you could basically format that data into um, Evernote. Before we get started, if you like this video, please click the like button. It really helps out my channel. Um, and I'm really trying to grow this um, on a race to get to a thousand subscribers and 4,000 um, watch hours um, this year. So right now I'm a little over 200 subscribers. So I'm really trying to drive my traffic up. So if you pre like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you can like it. And if you want to see more videos about how to s you basically use productivity tools and how to be more productive, uh, whether it's Todoist, Notion, Evernote, um, any of the Google suite uh, or just any other app, subscribe to my channel because that's basically what this channel does is covers all those um, all those apps and how to do various things in them. I have playlists for each of the apps uh, that you can look at and um, you know just learn as much as you want about these apps and how to how they can enable you to be more productive. And finally, if you want to be notified when I release videos, please click that bell. Thanks. Let's get started with the tutorial. I've navigated to uh, a blog page here that I um, was reading and I want to put this into Evernote. The biggest value of the Web Clipper um, is its ability to quickly capture data that you see on a web page and put it into the app that you want to put it into, which case is Evernote, obviously, in, in the best format possible so it's easily readable as well as easily retrievable. And that's where Evernote really shines. Its Web Clipper is awesome. It does a great job at understanding what it's clipping and putting it in a format that is easily consumable, both in Evernote as well as easily retrievable in Evernote. And I use it all the time. Evernote is my repository for all documentation, any kind of manuals. Like, you know, rather than keep all the manuals for all the stuff I buy, I simply typically go to the website of the manufacturer. I download the PDF, or, or if it opens up in my browser, I just web clip it, put it right into Evernote, into my, uh, I have a full folder just full of manuals, instruction guides, uh, any sort of reference information, I put it in there. And because Evernote is able to index PDFs that have been uh, OCR'd, OCR standing for optical character recognition, it can actually search those. So if I go into Evernote later on, I'm looking like how to, um, change the lens on a Canon M50, it could pull the, not only pull up the M50 user guide, it'll take me to this very specific spot where that those words are in the document. And it'll do that for all the documents that I have in Evernote. So as you, as you use it, um, you'll realize that it's really good at getting that information because I don't want to thumb through or scroll through, you know, pages and pages of data. I just want to, I know what I'm looking for maybe a setting or I'm looking for how to do something very specific and I can type that in and it takes me right to that section. And that's really cool. It saves me a lot of time. So back to how you clip. <laughs> so here's the article. All you do is you click on the green elephant <laughs> in the uh, toolbar here. As you can see, it'll give it, it has it captures the title of the blog post as well as the the name of the site and you know, study hacks blog, Cal Newport. And it gives you a couple of different clip formats. It defaults to article. So well it goes defaults to article, it's smart enough to grab the actual article. So rather than grab like the sidebar or it has like a sign up for his um you know newsletter or his about page his about section or any other stuff so you know where his books are it's just giving me the content i want now it also has the comments in here it's not perfect but let's say i did want more of this content i wanted more of it so i have a couple options here i can just hit this little plus button if you see these plus and minus this plus and minus here this green box is what it's going to actually clip so i can actually hit the plus button once and you can see now it includes the study hacks blog um title if I click again, it brings in the sidebar. So I have everything in the sidebar. If I click, if I want to get rid of that, I can click again and get even more. Now to go back, you just click the minus. You know, it works on a step fashion and then gets to what I want. So now that I have what I want, 
I can choose my clip format. In this case, I'm going to choose article. I can then come down here and t tell it what um, book, uh, notebook I want to put it into. By default, I'll just leave it in the Evernote book and I can give it a tag. So I might say Cal Newport. And as you see, I have, a, I have a tag already. I can put that in there. And now I know that, you know, I might put in blog as a, res you know, as an example. So I know that that's a blog post and hit save clip. And that will capture it, drop it into Evernote. And then the clipper actually has a little bit of intelligence to it, right? So what I could do here is I could obviously view it. It tells me it's saved. I could view it. I can also delete the clip if I just decide I, I change my mind. And it will also look for things that are particularly related. Now, it's not doing a very good job here, uh, to be blunt. While this article may or may not be really, may or may not be related, I'm pretty sure my receipt to Upwork is not. So it's a sort of a hit and miss on that one. So I'm going to close that out. Now, let's go to a different article. Building a World War II bunker into an office building. That's actually pretty interesting. Let's say I wanted to capture this one. But I, so I click on the web clicker part. Right, it's going to bring up the little prompt, but let's say I want to do a simplified article. Now, what a simplified article, when I click it, is it strips everything out and literally just brings me the image and the article. And this is really more of like a, a more readable way of capturing it. So this is another option, and I can do the same thing here. I can go to and clip it to a notebook. Let's say I'll do it to career learning. Um, I don't know why it's giving me these receipts, these um, tags. <laughs> Evernote's a little bit hit or miss sometimes with you know, what tags. It tries to guess what tags you might want. It doesn't always do a great job. Again, I might just say Cal Newport as an example. And blog, right? And I might put in bunker as a tag. And then I can hit save. And it'll save that clip off. And there it goes. And again... You know, it's very hit or miss in terms of its related notes field. You know, that's one of those things that's going to get a little better as you use it, but it's far from perfect. Now, if I wanted to clip this um, article in a different way, I can hit, you know, clip it. I can grab the whole page. So I can actually click full page, and that will literally be, give me everything, okay? Everything on the page. So I can clip that. I can also just clip the bookmark. So sometimes you don't want the page. You just want... A snippet of it um, in the link. So, you, so an example of this might be: let's say you have a page where you in Evernote, where a note in Evernote, where you have there's a bunch of links that you want to get to and read at some point. You don't have time to read it now, and you don't want to grab the whole thing and read it out of Evernote. You just want to grab a link to it and you'll click on it later. Um, you can do that by clicking on the bookmark, and I'll you know I'm gonna actually save that clip. I'm gonna put it in a in uh, my inbox. Um, I'm going to delete these ridiculous tags that it keeps trying to assign. I'm going to save that. And it's done. And again, we're going to ignore its um, related notes. You can also save it as a screenshot. You can actually literally grab a screenshot and it's select. So here, when I select screenshot, it gives me this sort of X and Y axis that you can see I'm moving around here a little bit. The screen gets a little grayed out and I can actually capture so this is good for like if I want to screen capture something. So let's say this is like a diagram that I really liked. I can just grab this image, right? It's not a diagram, but let's say it was. I can clip that. And as you can see, it takes it, grabs just what I want. I can annotate. It takes me right into the annotation tools. So this is really cool. So I can actually sit there and like I might say, let's say I was like, put that there. And maybe I want to put some text in there. And I can say, Nice picture. I have no idea, <laughs> but you get the idea. You can annotate it. You have a bunch of different options here. You can also zoom in. You can zoom out. And then you can also, you know, you can ultimately get around to saving it, <laughs> which I'm going to do. So I'm going to go into inbox and I'm going to save this clip. Okay. And there we go. So let's see how these things turned out. So when I clipped the, the article, right, as an article, this is what it came out like, the headline and the article itself. It also captures the comments, which is kind of annoying, but, you know, no system's perfect. Looks pretty good. Formatting is relatively decent. Content is easily readable. So it looks pretty good. Now let's look at a simplified article. I'll pull that into frame here. 
And as you can see, much cleaner. This is the way you really want to clip a, if you're looking for an article, a traditional article that you want to read, like a blog post, this is probably the best way to go. You, it still captures the comments, but it actually looks decent. You can actually delete it pretty easily. Uh, but in terms of the form and how it looks and reads, it's definitely the most readable of the options. So we'll close that out. Let's bring over the, when we captured the, um, the bookmark. As you see, the bookmark is really cool. It captures the title, the blog, and the author, the link, and then a, a brief uh, sort of um, synopsis, right? Actually, excuse me, it's not a synopsis. It's the first beginning part of the article. And if you want more, you would just click on the link and it would open up the browser. Um, I can actually do that now. And it actually off screen, it's actually pulling up the browser. So that's what that looks like. Okay, so let's look at the annotation one. So as you can see here, I have it in here. It looks uh, pretty good. It has the annotations we did in the image, um, in the note itself. It's in the proper full, uh, notebook that we put it in. So pretty straightforward. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you. Again, if you liked this video, please click that like button. It really does help my channel. If you want to learn more about how to use productivity apps like Evernote, Notion, Todoist, uh, Google Docs, Google Sheets, or any other app, just subscribe to my channel. I cover them all, and I have a playlist for each of them, so please click the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified, please click the bell. And lastly, if you have anything you want to, any questions about what we covered today, any questions in general about any productivity apps, leave a comment. I check my comments. I respond to them as well. So uh, leave me a comment and I'd love to hear from you. As a matter of fact, write down what your favorite feature of Evernote is. Uh, for me, it's the way it can OC, uh, index OCR files and so I can quickly retrieve information. But I want to hear why you use Evernote. What is the one thing that makes you continue to use Evernote? Uh, so please put that in there. I'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks.